it's Monday morning and I'm feeling for some bake, not coconut bake, just a simple bake. So we have flour, we have yeast, we have nutmeg. I have put, I don't put no, no grease in my bake. We have tartar, and sh sugar, a little bit of salt, and I have some warm water. And I don't need my flour, I stretch my flour. So I just want to show you how I stretch my flour. And I just don't use grease in my dough because I don't need it. Because once you stretch your flour, you would get a nice soft, fluffy dough. And I tried, the least I will stretch my dough for is 10 minutes. The most I have stretched my dough for was 30 minutes. And oh my gosh, that thing was... I made some buns when I stretched that dough for that long. It was something else. How you know when you have enough water? When there is no more crumbs. That crumbly texture is no longer, but everything is more or less together, but not sappy. So I use four cups of flour here. And most times I would use, according to the weather, how hot it is, but it's rather chilly this morning. So I am, um, normally I would use two cups. And um, it's looking like I wouldn't need so much today, but. All right, so I'm just going to stop right here. And start to bring all the rest of the dough that is on here together with what is already moist. As I said, I don't need it, but I stretch, meaning so when I bring the dough together like this, I'll pull it apart like this. Pull it apart like this. So I'm going to set a timer. For 10 minutes. Okay, Google. 10 minute alarm. All right, so. I'm going to do it like this. And stretch. You want to stretch. And because of how warm your hands would be, the dough would start to get really soft. And so that's why I have my bucket here with my flour. And I, I sift my flour. So every time it's going to get a little too sticky sticky, you want to um, just apply a little bit of flour again. So again, the ingredients I used was four cups of flour. I used a pack of yeast, instant yeast. I used a teaspoon of bacon powder. A tablespoon of sugar. A teaspoon of salt. I used a teaspoon of nutmeg and two cups of water as I mentioned so as I said you're stretching it all this really 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 gives you a real nice nice dough it really makes a difference when you stretch Stretch and bring it in. You want to stretch and pull it in. Stretch. 
stretch and bring it in. Stretch it. Stretch it. Stretch it. How was your holidays thus far? Today is Monday. Just that was New Year's. Can you believe it? Yeah, it's coming to an end. Friday is the start of the brand new year. Wow, what a year 2020 has been, huh? It truly has been a nightmare for so many. So many. It really has been tough. But I think, if nothing, this has taught us the majority of human beings on this planet. The importance of family, the importance of loving each other, looking out for each other, being your neighbor's keeper. Because I think this is one situation that has taught us if we don't work together, especially to feed our family, if we don't look out and work for each other, we would go hungry. We would be out in the cold. So if nothing, we didn't learn anything. We learned the importance of togetherness. And yes, it might have a few just still in a bubble and just don't understand. But the majority, I think, learned a lot from this. if we don't have each other in this time to be a neighbor's keeper to make little hampers and share to teach your children the value of life the value of togetherness the value of family appreciating the little that you have because you could be what billionaire right now <laughs> you ain't no different right now you know All had to follow the same rules. So just as sometimes, all the money in the world can't save you. Because all the money in the world can't save you from the disease. Because if you get it today, crap will smoke your pipe according to the old people. <laughs> so trust me, if you have never tried stretching your dough instead of the constant kneading, 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 you would be surprised at how soft this door is if you do it this way. So you stretch and you fold it, basically. You stretch, you fold. You stretch, you fold. I started doing this method when I was doing a sourdough and then I tried it on my um, bun. Oh my gosh, I was like, yeah, yeah. And I have never stopped since. So I said, 10 minutes, oh my gosh, that is too much. I don't have patience to stand up for 10 minutes. And, but trust me, it will, it worth it in the end. It's worth it in the end. Because you're really, and I am putting no butter in this whatsoever, right? It's a no butter. And you say, but this thing will not be stiff. This thing will not be stiff to have no grease. Nope. Because it's kneaded and stretched for that 10 minutes, you would be surprised to see how soft it is. So when I need this for this 10 minutes, I'm going to let it rest for 10. And then when I rest it for 10, I will place it in a preheating oven at 375 degrees for 20 minutes 
and bake is finished. So 20 minutes in the oven, 10 minutes stretching, 10 minutes resting. All right? And that's basically it. And I'm gonna have this with some turkey, or smoked turkey that I made in my slow cooker. And I like to work on my counter with kneading flour. This way I find it's just more convenient. So, just make sure you clean your surface. And look how fast that 10 minutes come because I hate it become long start. So we did that really quick. Yeah. So I'll be back when put it in the oven you can really feel a little tiring sometimes especially when you now start to do this but use your strong hand we all have that one strong hand all right let me take off that Yes, we all have that one strong hand. All right, so that's, this is the only time I really give it any type of kneading is this part here when we're done. All right, and now see how nice and smooth it is. I'm gonna let that rest for 10 minutes. And while it's resting for 10 minutes, I'm going to put on the oven to preheat. Let me just prepare a little bit of flour. Yeah, alarm is going on now right also. Okay, Google, stop. All right, so now we're gonna let this rest for 10 minutes and then put on the oven while this is happening. And I shall be back when we're about to put this in the oven. Alrighty then. Oh. Alright, so the 10 minutes was up. I rolled it out to save time. And so if you were to measure out how thick this was, I would say about half an inch thick. Yes, so this is about half an inch thick. So uh, this was pre-greased. I am using a tower. You call this a tower hot plate. Um, how else you call it? Um, a platen, right? It all depends where you're from and what you refer this as. But in the Caribbean, we will mostly call it a tower or a platen. All right. So into my preheated oven, I'm going to place this for 20 minutes. I don't like a thick bake because I don't like all that pet inside of it. So I try to go as thin as possible. And most time with the measurements of this flour with the four cups, I tend to get exactly what I need for the size of this platen. So I'm going to just put some here so that the steam would escape. I was going to get a balloon in the oven. So I tried to do as much as possible. Yeah. And now into a preheated oven, we're going to put this for 20 minutes as I said. And enjoy.
So I'll see you back in 20 minutes when this bake is done. While the bake is cooking, let's prepare the turkey. I have some carrots, some zucchini, some sweet pepper, some tomato, carrots, onion, garlic. I, I, yes, I had pimentos in this. You could put any type of vegetables you like and I would cook everything until it all softens and has a nice bite to it. If you want it a little crunchy, you don't cook it that much, but I want it a little soft, not too crunchy. Then I strip a good piece of turkey breast and mix everything in. And now let's go back into the beak. Now the bake is finito. Now at this point you can add some grease on top of it just to keep it, um, just to add some salt, just to add that extra grease if you really really need some grease on your bake. But I don't because of how long I need the flour for. But you can add some grease to the surface of this to keep it soft for a longer period. But again, as I said, kneading it this way, you would not need to add any grease on top of the bake, any type of um, butter or anything like that whatsoever. You could just leave it as is. Let it cool or you could enjoy it hot like I am doing here now. Cutting a great big piece and I'm having it with a turkey. After I add the turkey in the um, vegetables, I let that cook down for at least a five minutes and that was it because remember the turkey is already cooked. The video for the turkey would be in the cards above. Also the video for my sourdough and my bun. As I mentioned as to how I stretch my dough would be in the cards above. Now I'm going to take out some of that turkey. I didn't need to add any, any seasoning to this because the smoked turkey recipe, as, the, as I said, would be in the cards above, was fully flavored. So I didn't need to add any type of seasoning just to cook it down as is because the turkey was fully flavored fully flavored already and the bake had a lot of enjoyable seasoning in it so I didn't need to add anything in it. So guys thanks for watching and don't forget to check out all of the links that I mentioned my smoked turkey, my sourdough and my buns and I'm going to make it even easier for you. Here you go these are the links to check out that I previously mentioned. Again thanks for the support, thanks for watching, have a good one, bye.